In this video, we're going to talk about um, a second application of the Arrhenius equation, which is catalysts. So in the previous video, we saw how temperature can affect reaction rate. And we saw that as temperature increases, um, the reaction rate also tends to increase. And in this case, what we're going to look at is how does activation energy affect that a reaction rate? So normally, you would think that an activation energy can't be changed, but actually it can be. And that's what the function of a catalyst is. So a catalyst is a substance that you add to a reaction that increases the rate by lowering the activation energy. In essence, what it does is it changes the pathway of the reaction so that it's easier for the uh, reactants to come together and go to products, and it's going to affect the transition state. So um, one thing that you should understand about catalysts is that they are not consumed in a reaction. So even though we add them to a reaction, basically their function is just to help things along, but they're, they're, not, they're, not, technic they're not a reactant. They don't get consumed and become part of the products. In the end, what you would have is you would have your products and your catalyst, and you'd have the same amount of catalyst that you started with. So for example, in lab, you guys saw what happens when you decompose KClO3 uh, to make oxygen gas. This was one of the gas law labs. And uh, the KClO3, we had to add a little bit of MnO2 as a catalyst to get this reaction to take place. Without that MnO2, nothing would happen. So in the end, what you wound up having was you wound up having the MnO2 and the KCl as a solid. So this would be solid MnO2. And then we collected the oxygen gas separately. So um, the MnO2 that we had at the beginning doesn't actually get consumed by the reaction. It just stays around and hangs out with the products. Okay, so how does this work in terms of um, affecting the reaction rate? Well, what a catalyst does is if you have a reaction where, let's say, it's an endothermic reaction, this is our activation energy uh, when it's uncatalyzed. That's just the activation energy of the reaction without a catalyst. When you add a catalyst, what happens is you get a lower activation energy, we'll call that Ea catalyzed, and that lower, that lower activation energy uh, allows for the rate to increase. And we're going to take a look at how we can understand that co uh, quantitatively in just a second. For those of you who are in biology, the way this works is it changes the structure of the transition state. So the bonds that are formed in a reaction without a catalyst have to form on their own. But when you add a catalyst like a protein or an enzyme, that protein or enzyme holds the substrates together in a certain orientation so that the, it's easy for the bonds to form. And so it changes the structure of the transition state. Let's look at this from the quantitative sense with the Arrhenius equation. So we have the ln of k1 is equal to the ln of a minus ea over rt. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have a k1, and that's going to be associated with an activation energy 1. And you can kind of think of the 1 as being the uncatalyzed, if that makes sense. So we have the uncatalyzed case, and then when we add our catalyst, we're going to have a different rate constant, K2, that's catalyzed, ln of A, minus Ea2 over RT. And the whole point of adding a catalyst is that it increases the rate at a given temperature. So we can get a much faster reaction, but still run the reaction at the same temperature. So in this case, we're going to hold our temperature constant, unlike in the previous video where we held the activation energy constant and changed the temperature. In this video, we're going to hold the temperature constant and change the activation energy. So when we do our subtraction, we're going to get something very similar to what we got in the last video. We're going to get ln of k1 over k2 is going to equal 1 over rt. And we have the rt pulled out because the t is a constant. And then it's going to be ea2 minus ea1. And so this gives you another form of the Arrhenius equation where we can now work with a pair of K and Ea um, where we can look to see what happens when we add a catalyst. So if we know what the rate constant is and what the activation energy f is for an, a reaction that's uncatalyzed, we can figure out either what the rate constant would be or what the activation energy would be um, if it were catalyzed as long as we knew one of those two uh, variables. So this is just a little bit different flavor of the um, Arrhenius equation, and it's very similar to the same. It's very similar in concept to what we did with temperature.